Hi there, it's Simon Gray from Career Codex, back with another weekly video. And today, I'm talking about how to rank with executive recruiters. And uh, just got off the uh, off a call uh, with a prospective client, and uh, one of the questions I was asked was, how do you how do you get the attention of executive recruiters? You know, I've sent my CV and resume out, but I'm not getting a call back. And this is a common, common problem. So uh, some of the stuff I'm gonna share with you today um, on this video and also in the podcast and blog post is, uh, is how to rank with executive recruiters, how to get their attention so that you're the one that makes their shortlist ahead of your competition. Just wanna make a quick caveat because uh, anyone that's read any of my books, anyone that has been on my Jumpstart or Executive Edge program uh, will know that um, it's not all about recruitment uh, companies as a route to your next executive position. In fact, it's much, much more than that. And uh, two of the things I advocate uh, which involve going to the hidden market for jobs, is uh, going direct to employer, and also leveraging the power of market makers, which are well-connected individuals in your profession, industry sector, or geography. So uh, executive recruiters are an important part of your strategy, but they're only a small part. But I'm gonna show you how to get the best uh, from the executive recruiter relationship, how to get their attention today, and how to be memorable uh, in front of an executive recruiter moving, uh, moving forward. Got the trusted iPad, just to reference, but uh, won't need to look at this too much, um, but uh, just want to make sure I keep on track and make sure I get this information out to you in the right order. So why are we talking about ranking? Why not some other term? Well, uh, the connection here is, is, is Google, of course. And uh, if you're looking for something, you're looking to buy something or, or whatever it is, something you're researching, what Google tries to do, based on the keywords you put into the search engine, it tries to put the most relevant content in front of you. So uh, what businesses are out there doing is trying to make sure their websites rank uh, based on the keywords that you put in. So uh, if I'm searching to, to buy a car, the car manufacturers want to, to rank for the type of car that I'm looking for um, because you've got to be on page one as a business. If you're on page two, three, four, well, somebody might look at page two, three, four, but the chances are they probably won't we tend to look at what appears on page one. And when it comes to the executive job market, as an executive job seeker, it's exactly the same. You need to rank in the eyes of executive recruiters so you're on their page one, you're on their radar, their page one radar for the opportunities that they have right now or the opportunities that they have and are likely to have coming up. So how do you rank? How do you get the attention of recruiters? Well, um, you can do two things, uh, two principal areas to focus on. The first is the online uh, relationship build, and the online relationship build often then leads to the offline uh, relationship build, where you get uh, on the phone with the recruiter, or you get face-to-face -face, uh, with, uh, with the recruiter. So in terms of online, you need a website, and uh, don't worry, you don't need to go out and build a, a website, you don't need any coding skills, because the website has already been built for you, and it's called LinkedIn. And uh, LinkedIn really changed the game in terms of recruitment. Uh, when I was in the recruitment game, I had my own business. Um, of course, I had a database, my own database uh, on my computer system. But uh, you know, as a business, we started to use LinkedIn because it was an extended database. And uh, employers think like this too now. And sometimes before engaging the help of an executive rec recruitment firm, uh, employers will go onto LinkedIn to try and source talent directly. And um, you know, employers and recruiters aren't too worried about whether this uh, whether this talent is available immediately. It's about finding the best person for the uh, for the position, which references one of my earlier uh, videos and blog posts where I talk about why your professional headline shouldn't be seeking new opportunities. So if you'd like to check that out, please uh, please go and uh, have a look on the website, and you'll seek it out. Uh, you'll seek it out there. So. LinkedIn, really, really important. Um, database is up to date because the onus is on the, uh, the owner of the profile to keep it up to date, which makes it even more valuable. Um, what you need to create on LinkedIn is an attractive shop window. So um, this starts with you really defining what kind of opportunity it is you want, uh, and then communicating to your target recruiter or employer in a language that they will understand. And uh, LinkedIn gives you an opportunity to se select skills, uh, which you can be endorsed for by people who visit your profile. And selecting these skills really positions you in a certain space in front of your target audience. So, uh, you know, if you're in the aerospace sector, you want to pick terms that relate to aerospace and your discipline that you have in that aerospace sector. So you have to think very clearly, a bit like a search, you know, a, search, a business owner who, who wants to appear on a search engine about how you position yourself properly on LinkedIn to get found. But it's more than just a shop window. You know, you have to use LinkedIn proactively. And what I mean by this 
is you have to go out there and communicate directly with your target audience, which means executive recruiters. You have to get their attention by doing stuff ongoing on the platform. It's not sufficient simply to create a profile and then leave it out there doing nothing. You have to work at this profile on a daily basis. And here I'm talking about status updates, um, I'm talking about published posts, and I'm also talking about engaging in groups, the right kind of groups, which is where the executive recruiters often go to search for talent. I'll give you a real life story. Uh, when I was in the recruitment game, I, uh, I had a, a position given to me by one of my clients, which was a really senior internal audit position. Now, I had nobody on my database that was relevant for this position. So I went onto LinkedIn, I found an IT audit group, and I uh, posted in there that I was recruiting this position, gave some brief details, asked for recommendations and referrals. I was recommended a number of people. One of those people ultimately got the job and uh, they've been promoted since. They've been in with this business now, I think for six or seven years. So it just goes to show that it's more than just having a, a, a profile on there. You've got to work your profile and be positioned properly to capture the attention of uh, executive recruiters, recruiters when they're looking to find you. And I can tell you they're always looking and uh, it doesn't matter whether you're uh, out there stating that you're looking for an opportunity or not, if you have the right skills and experience for the opportunities that they have right now, you're likely to get an approach from them right now. So what about the offline world? Well, the aim of any online engagement is to get a face-to-face -face engagement because the recruitment world works you know, it's people to people. And ultimately, before anyone makes a decision on a senior executive, um, they're going to want to meet this person. And uh, as, a, as a former recruiter, I wouldn't put anybody forward to my clients unless I'd met them. But the challenge for the candidate, of course, was sometimes to get in front of me because there were lots of candidates vying for my attention. So as a, as a candidate, as an executive job seeker, how do you get the attention of an executive recruiter? Well, you start online, um, but then you might follow that up with a phone call or a request for a face to face meeting. Now, at that meeting or uh, in that telephone conversation, you've really got to understand a recruiter's motivation or motivations. And um, you know, as harsh as this may sound, uh, what motivates a recruitment business? Well, a recruitment business is like pretty much any other business. It's there to make money. It's there to generate profits uh, for its owners, its shareholders, uh, whoever else. So you've got to think in terms of your convertibility into cash. And uh, cash, of course, is the fee uh, that a recruiter will obtain uh, having placed you in a position. Now, I'm not going to get bogged down in the detail. There are different types of recruiters, contingent, retained, uh, search firms, and uh, how they get paid is, is different. I'll cover this in a future, uh, a future video blog post and, and, and podcast. But essentially, if they place you, they get paid. If they don't, well, they probably, um, they probably don't. So they're always looking to think about whether you are a candidate that is suitable for their current positions or positions they may have coming along shortly. And the challenge for many executive job seekers can be to get that face-to-face -face airtime if a recruiter doesn't have an opportunity for you right now. And that doesn't mean you're a bad candidate. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your skills and experience. It just means on the um, on the, the their radar currently, they have opportunities they're looking to fill. And you're not you're not quite right for those opportunities at this point in time. But you can still communicate to a recruiter to grab their attention and to remain memorable for when those future opportunities come along. And this starts with recognizing that that the, the nature of the recruitment game is about profit making. It's about fee making, and thinking about you not just as a candidate who's looking for that next position, but about your convertibility into cash and your opportunity to help a recruiter make recruitment fees. So here's two bits of advice. One of the things you can do um, to help you get the attention of recruiters is to protect your exclusivity. So if you go out there and register with 20, 30 recruitment companies, then the recruiter that you're talking to right now has probably got, or the recruiter you want to talk to right now, has probably got a one in 30 chance of placing you. Uh, that's how they'll think, because a good recruiter will think in terms of probability. So it's far better to build some really good relationships with three or four recruiters than to try and register with everybody. And the temptation is, if you're on executive job boards, recruiters will look at those, they'll want to register you with their organisation. But you have to make sure that the recruiter you're registering with and you're talking to, or you're trying to, you're trying to talk to, is the right recruiter for you based on what you've defined as the opportunity you want to move uh, towards. Because you, know, you have to communicate in a language that, uh, that resonates with your target audience, which is an executive recruiter for the purposes of today's video, but could be a, a market maker or an employer uh, direct. So registering with a few is, is, is the best thing to do. 
Um, and uh, even if you register with lots but don't tell people, recruiters will know. The uh, recruiters, and when I was a recruiter, you would know things about the candidate that they probably didn't even know themselves. So, um, you know, you have, to, you have to be genuine with this. You have to be exclusive, protect your exclusivity, and register with the most relevant executive recruiters who can help you. Because they'll take you more seriously, because they have a higher probability of placing you. You have a higher probability of being still around for them to place and for you to accept a position that they put you forward to. Um, because recruiters are very protective of their shortlists. You know, for any position, they may have four or five um, spots on their shortlist. So they want to make sure that every single candidate they put forward um, is going to be there at the end of the game, having done a good interview process with the potential to be offered and with the potential to accept that position. Second thing you can do with uh, executive recruiters is to explain the long term relationship. So think about how you can um, think about how you can do this. Well, if you get placed by a recruiter, you're going to go to a, a new organization. And in a new organization as an executive, the chances are you're going to make some personnel changes. That's what you know ten, tends to happen. So if you explain to the recruiter that you understand this is a long term relationship, this isn't just one transaction and that uh, if they help and advise you and look after you uh, and put you forward to, uh, to their clients, what you promise to do in return is if they do a good job for you, you get offered a position, there is an opportunity for you to come back and use their services moving forwards, that you will honor that. And uh, I can tell you as a, as a former recruiter, one of the things that used to annoy me so much and annoys a lot of the people in the recruitment space that I, uh, I still know, um, is when they place a candidate and then that candidate doesn't come back to them to, uh, to use their services when they need to recruit uh, into the organization that they've been placed in. So um, having that open conversation, direct conversation with a recruiter, tells them you really understand how the game is played and they're more likely to work harder for you. Related to this is the backfill opportunity. So if a recruitment company places you uh, in a position, of course there is a vacancy left behind. Sometimes there isn't if you know, you've been made redundant, there was no vacancy there, but let's assume that there is. So if there is a vacancy there, one of the things you can help the recruiter do is get an inroad in the business you're leaving. Uh, you can introduce them to the senior decision maker who will be replacing uh, the position that you're coming out of. Uh, and you can pitch this at the start of your conversation uh, with a recruiter to say, look, I'm gonna try and help you. I know how the game's played. When I, you know, when I ultimately get placed by you, uh, what I'll help to do is to introduce you and see if I can get you an inroad with the company that I currently work for. Uh, if you don't already have a relationship there. So these two things recognize this convertibility, convertibility into cash. And it's not just your convertibility into cash that counts. It's your ability to open doors for professional recruiters, for executive recruiters that uh, will captivate their attention and will make them want to work harder for you. So real high level uh, dive into uh, how to rank with executive recruiters today. Uh, I have a, a chapter in my book, Super Secrets of Successful Executive Job Search. Um, which is dedicated to getting in front of decision makers. I talk about a whole host of other strategies to get the attention of professional recruiters in there. It's available on Amazon worldwide. Um, so if you'd like to check that out, please, uh, please do so on there. If you'd like to find out more about Career Codex and uh, some of the programs that I offer, Jumpstart Program, Executive Edge Program, then please visit careercodex.com. So uh, that's it for today. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this video. I'm gonna get it published now. And uh, until uh, next time, Take care and I'll talk to you soon.